show. Good morning, everybody. Welcome. We are live on YouTube, live on Facebook. Uh, we have a special guests tonight from the Trainers Forum. We're going to meet them all in the second round. Uh, but as you know, in this show, we get right into it. But before we get started, <laughs> there you go. On Mitya's shirt, it's the TSF t merchandise. You probably get it at the trainersforum.com. Is that, is that the right website? Dot yeah. org. Dot org. Yeah. Coming soon. Coming soon. So always before I start the show, this is this is where I officially do the toast. If anybody wants to join me, uh, it also makes the great thumbnail for the episode. If you want to say like, hey, <laughs> I have some. Oh look at this! Everybody's toast is wonderful, wonderful. All right, let me take my drink. We'll get started. Excited for this. That's going to be a lot of fun. A lot of fun. All right, here's where I switch into my hosting voice. You ready? Hey, everybody. Welcome to the Stuff I Never Knew Trivia Game Show Podcast. I'm Jeff. I'm your host this morning. Today, we have four guests calling from what we would say across the pond. Uh, they're in Europe, and we're going to meet them in the second round. They're from the Trainers Forum, and we'll, we'll, like I said, we'll meet them all when they sit in the hot seat, right before they sit in the hot seat. But in the first game, uh, we're going to play a little game. It's a little uh, U.S. versus Europe. It's I'm going to give you a list of inventions. And I want you to tell me, were these items or things invented in Lithuania or Louisiana? And one of the reasons I picked Lithuania is they were going to have a conference this year in Lithuania, but we're going to learn about their conferences and their training. We're going to learn more about them. But I thought it'd be fun to tie it together, and then we'll find out you know, how they're bouncing back and, and going through uh, you know, a post-COVID world with conferences. So my order tonight is Oscar, Mitya, mm. Katia, Sabina. Oscar, are you ready? Yes, hit me. All right. Tabasco hot sauce. Was that from Louisiana or Lithuania? Louisiana. Louisiana is correct. Yes. Over to meet you. Sure. Vodka. Was that in Lithuania or Louisiana? It would be sooner in Lithuania. In Lithuania? So, yes. Uh, that is correct. Correct. All right. Over to Katia. The office breathalyzer. It's to, to measure alcohol in your system. Did they invent that in Lithuania or Louisiana? I think that in Lithuania, like people don't really go around testing that that much, maybe. So let's say Louisiana. <laughs> Louisiana. Well, if they invented uh, vodka in Lithuania, they needed to check you. It was invented in Lithuania. <laughs> Incorrect. Oh, damn. Ooh. Over to Sabina. Cotton candy, that light, fluffy, pillowy sugar stuff. Was that in Lithuania or Louisiana? I would say Lithuania. Lithuania. Incorrect. If it's sugar and <laughs> fat, it's probably America. It was Louisiana. <laughs> <laughs> All right, back to Oscar. I guess there are no mind games, right? It's not neither. It's not a choice, or is it? Yeah, yeah. No, no. Sometimes I do that though. I do uh, Lithuania, Louisiana, or neither, and sometimes mm. I'll do or both. That's both, and it's that's always a red herring on this show. Okay. So don't ever fall for that when I give you three choices. <laughs> that's my secret. Oh, well. <laughs> back to Oscar. The casino dice game craps when you play craps in the casino. Hmm. Was that Louisiana or Lithuania? Sounds like an American thing, so I'm going to have to go with Louisiana. <laughs> Louisiana is correct. Two for two. You swept the first round. <gasps> to meet you, the multi-stage rocket. Was that in Louisiana? Well, there are theories about some technology coming from the Balkans, but I would say Louisiana sooner. At least officially. <laughs> well, officially, it is Lithuania coming up with the multi-stage rocket. Incorrect. Wow. All right. When is Lithuania in the oh, wow. media? <laughs> <laughs> Lithuania's got some stuff. All right, Takadia. The, euth the euthanasia roller coaster. It's a designed roller coaster that has a series of loops that can take you out. Is it in Louisiana? Or Lithuania. I believe it's hypothetical. I don't think anybody ever built it, but... Oh, wow. 
I would say Lithuania. <laughs> Lithuania is correct. <laughs> correct. Yeah. They got rockets, alcohol, and a, and a really dangerous exactly. roller coaster. All right, the last one, the Sabina. The Reuben sandwich with the rye bread, Swiss cheese, sauerkraut, and dressing. Lithuania oh, or Louisiana? This sounds, oh, this sounds really Russian-like, so I would say Lithuania. Lithuania is correct. Your first point on the board. Let's go to the live scoring tonight. We or this morning. I'm all. Uh, we have two one one. We do have Oscar in the lead, which which what we do on this show is when somebody does have a lead going in the second round, you get to pick the order. So Ooh. you can keep it the same or change it up. Let us know, Oscar. Um, let's change it up. All right. Who would you like to go first? Uh, Sabina, then Mitya, then Katya, then me. I'll go last this time. Oh, bat and cleanup. I want to welcome you to the show. It's the Trainers Forum. Officially, now we can talk about the trainersforum.org. Oscar, Sabina, Mitya, Katya. Katia, welcome to the show. It's nice to be here. Thank you for having us. Well, tell me a little bit about the Transform. I was going through uh, you know, some Very of the things that you've been posting lately. And tell me a little bit more about it and, and how people can find out about you. Sure. I Since we got in contact, I'll do the brief summary. Basically, Transform is a group of awesome people all around Europe where we talk about training, learning. We're a group of educators. And the event that we've been hosting for the past seven years, I think, it's called Trainers Forum Conference. And that usually happens in the different parts around Europe. And it's basically to help educators become better at learning and teaching. And that's one of the, the missions of Trainers Forum. But otherwise, just like, like hanging out and talk about learning. Very nice. And yeah. you, so you have an annual conference. I thought it went back to maybe 2011. I think I saw the first one was... Um, you know, maybe. you're almost nine, maybe 10 years now going in. I think we skipped a couple of years, but yeah. I could be wrong. Okay. <laughs> but it's like nine to 10 years old. And, no, no, um, no, it's true. It, it's, a, it's a very grassroots movement. It's, it's a very uh, organic thing that happened because European student organizations needed, you know, to maintain their organizations, even though everyone was changing, like every three, four years, right? So a bunch of people got together who were involved with trainings, learning, organizational development, and eventually, you know, it grew into a community of practice, basically a guild, a guild for learners. And what's really exciting right now, what's what's unfolding, uh, is we're getting local hubs. We're getting uh, people who are willing to act as some kind of TSF hosts and basically hosts little hubs for learning to happen, which can then plug into this global network and where we can really kind of sink our teeth into deeper kind of issues and systemic kind of uh yeah how to how to create the educational systems of the future on a micro and macro scales right because we're all learners in everything we do and we really think like learning is a huge superpower so what's um, something yeah if you're you... interested in learning into anything you'd be uh what's something that you've taken from what that you've learned from from doing all this all these years <laughs> was it directed to Mitya or to all of us? Yeah, anybody, anybody. Yeah. I mean, so after running the conferences and meeting all these people, have you, you know, taken anything back that's really inspired you or or helps keep you yes, moving? Yes, for sure. Forward? It's hard to put into a short. Yeah. And also, I'm noticing some kind of a lag, but um, yeah, I uh, the biggest thing I've learned from this is how. Um, how sneaky learning is like you think you you open a book or you attend a training session and you learn something but it's really not like you get the seeds of ideas and then you take them back into your life and they slowly then grow so it's it's really been this reframing of the whole learning process and um yeah like for me what i've learned is how differently different people look at the world and how much you can learn from kind of taking different perspectives. So that, that would be one one thing. And of course, like the people, the people that are around uh, Europe and willing to co-create stuff, projects and uh, yeah, and, and organizations that are human friendly. So that's a big part of Trainers Forum, which I've learned is uh, how to host a space for people, especially in this time, you know, where you can't meet physically, where you have people collaborating on something from different countries, different backgrounds and uh, 
Yeah, this is something that we're learning in process, I would say. It's, we have 20 people currently really active and um, yeah, finding a way to align with people's different rhythms and everything else they have going on in their life. It's, it's quite uh, fun, very organic. And, and part of the way that you support the Trainers Forum is through a podcast, I believe, the Learning Experience Podcast. And is that all 20 members that rotate in and out through and, and come on the show? The Learn Learning Experience Podcast, that was initially that I started with Sabina w one year ago, pretty much now. And yeah, it was just another service that we wanted to provide so that people could learn more about the science of learning and provide a tool for trainers and coaches and educators to become better in their own profession. That's what the, the goal is. And what's the best yeah. way people can find about the Learning Experience Podcast? They can go on any podcasting platform on yeah, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Pocket Cast, and just type in the Learning Experience. And yeah, they'll, they'll be able to learn a ton about learning, how to be better learners, how to be better educators. And also, if they want to come on the podcast or get to know us more, <laughs> It's all, all in the description. Awesome. Anything else? Anybody? We all word. Well, I we would start. like to add. Sorry. Um, I'd add uh, when you asked about what we learned, and there was this pause. I think it was because all of us have taken so much in the last year, especially from Trainers Forum. It's kind of hard to pinpoint one thing. But for me, going back to my very starts in Trainers Forum, uh, I discovered the beauty lays in coming together with people who don't agree with you because that's where growth really happens. We are in our formal, because a lot of us are coming from student backgrounds and that's really very condensed because the idea and the underlying background is kind of the same and you tend to get uh, caught in this um, uh, like positive reinforcement loop with always the same ideas around you. But once you go cross organization, that's really the beauty of uh, Trainers Forum for me, that it's a place for everyone. And you come face to face with people who have fundamentally different ideas. That's where learning kind of exponentiates. And that's uh, also true Oscar pod Oscar's podcast when you're, I don't know, walking down the street listening to it and you have to pause because you're like, oh, wait, wow, I never saw it this way. And now it's just like mind blowing. Well, I would suggest if you want to thrive off of people who don't see eye to eye, never communicating and never getting along, you should consider a branch in America. Uh, we are the kings of no compromise, not seeing eye to eye. <laughs> so, uh, you know, let's talk Traders Forum America. We need, a, <laughs> we need some help yeah. over here. <laughs> let's do it, Jeff. It's a dream of ours to branch out of Europe. Yeah. All right. and and for me, just to a quick add, and of course, on... it's something that, that you wouldn't be. Go yeah, ahead. there's a lag, so we have to uh, time travel when we're talking. <laughs> so, so I just wanted to to build on what Katya said that uh, even though we are so fundamentally different in our beliefs and our uh, in the ways we see the world, uh, I think that we have the same purpose, which is to uh, further the domain of uh, uh, unconventional non-formal education. And we are just coming together so organically, even though we are such different beings. And uh, this is uh, what I love and what I, I've taken from Penis Forum. Yes, sorry, Mitya, no. Pitch, pitch, TSF, US. <laughs> Is it? No, it's just I wanted I wanted to mention that it's um you couldn't have set this up like it would be very hard like when I mentioned the origin story with different organizations like a result of that is that we have literally a very interdisciplinary crowd like there were organizations of engineers psychologists pharmacists uh, geologists all over the place you know people pi pilots like there's it's very very interdisciplinary very intercultural. But the beauty is what we're kind of doing right now is this kind of abstract global network is starting to grow roots. So when you mentioned in America that you would like to have a trainers from hub, let's say, uh, it's something that we could support anyone who's interested in setting it up to be a host, an ambassador. And basically you get like, you, you drag someone from your kind of immediate social networks who's also interested in learning and you set up a little hub together, right? And then that can grow based on what people actually want to learn and use in their life. So. It's a very bottom-up, very organic process, very open for co-creation. And that's, I think, the, the secret ingredient, at least from our side.
<laughs> and very it's good. a very warm place in in the sense that we're we're sharing like our tips and tricks because otherwise it can be very competitive like if you're a coach trainer educator you know you're holding sometimes your cards close to your chest in terms of what works you know stuff like that but here we're basically you know putting all of the lego pieces on the table all of us and then you know seeing how we can you know merge create something together that we couldn't individually and that's um that's fun <laughs> it's really fun and a couple of ways to find you on Facebook. There's the Trainers Forum uh, page on Facebook of over 5,000 members, it looks like, on there. You have trainersforum.org online and the Learning Experience podcast. So uh, I'll put all that in the show notes. We'll have it linked uh, to you. And once we start uh, sharing this on, on the socials, uh, I'll have all those links in the notes every time we reference you, which brings me to my favorite Perfect. question. Thank you. I would add, though, uh, a Facebook group. There's a Facebook group, which is a bit smaller event, uh, a smaller space. It's around, I think, 700, 600 people. And there we're more kind of focused on, on the actual kind of exchange between practitioners. So if you're an educator, trainer, um, teacher, that would be a place where you can really get some concrete advice and feedback on any projects, any challenges you're facing. So, And the Facebook page, that's more uh, like for, for learners in general and not necessarily people supporting the learning process of others. So I would add the, the Facebook group if you're, if you're a practitioner and you really want to get your hands dirty. Sounds good. I'll put links. Yeah, the group Thank is you. our inner circle. Go ahead. Yeah, I said the group is our inner circle. So if you're really into, then we'll be expecting Sounds good. There. I'll put links to both in the show notes to the website and to the podcast. But that brings me to my favorite part of the show. Even more favorite than meeting you. I heard that was my favorite part. This is my favorite, favorite part. You're each going to sit in the hot seat, and Oscar picked the order. Sabina, you are first. Okay. And tonight we're playing a game. It's called uh, Stuff I Never Knew. Acronym is SYNC. Uh, Stuff I Never Knew. SYNC. It's called a SYNC Hookup 4 as the name of a game we're playing tonight. And you're going to get four general knowledge questions. Okay. And all four of those answers will tie together to give you one bonus point answer. So... um I could give you all the answers could be Spice Girls, right? And then you could answer Spice Girls as the, that's, okay. those four answers would tie together. So, and these are all going to be food based. So all four answers will tie together to something food related. Okay. All right, Sabina, your first question. What are Chardonnay, Sauvignon, and Riesling precisely known as? Um, wines? Uh, what kind of wines? Um, rosés? Uh, I'm looking for white, white wines. White wines. Okay. That's a weird one. I'm not going to give you the point, though. Sorry. It's fine. It's fine. <laughs> All right. Your second clue. The movie The Blank House Rules stars Michael Caine and Tobey Maguire. What? Um. I have no fucking idea. Oh, <laughs> That's why we edit. <laughs> I don't know. Don't know? Okay. The It's the cider house rules. The cider house rules. So, so far you've had white wine and cider. Okay. Your third question. You know, I'm, I'm so bad at this. I talk so much <laughs> on that before I get it done. It's fine. It's fine. All the points are in the final round. Here we go. The the finest Scottish whiskies are called single what? Single blank. Malt. Malt is correct. And your fourth clue is the Secretary of State under George W. Bush was Condoleezza blank. Rice. Rice is correct. So what ties white wines, cider, malt, and rice together? Right. Just you don't don't be sour if you get this wrong. Uh, the first thing that comes to mind is sake, but I don't know. No, no, they are all vinegars: rice vinegar, malt vinegar, cider vinegar, yeah, white vinegar. So we got two points for you. Not too bad. We got fifteen points in the final round, Good. which means you're going to move over to meet you. Are you ready for the hot seat? Yes, yes, for sure. 
All right. The clumsy character from Star Wars, The Phantom Menace, that outraged fans everywhere was named Blank Blank Binks. No idea. No idea. Jar Jar <laughs> Binks. Jar Jar. <laughs> Oh, I think that's yeah, right. Sabina yeah. knew it. <laughs> well, uh, the, the other thing about the show is people underestimate how difficult the hot seat is. Once you yeah. get a question and you're the only one that can answer it, it's like you're like a deer in headlights. <laughs> it's difficult. I, I, I try to tell people, but you don't understand until you experience it. All right. Your second question. Which Bobby Pickett song was an absolute graveyard smash? It was called The Blank Mash. The Black Mash? No idea. Uh, Bobby Pickett songs. Sorry. It is The Monster Mash. The Monster Mash? I don't know if you've heard that song. Or the Monster Mash. Monster Mash. So far, you've had Jar. And if Monster I heard it, hear it, I'd probably remember. All right. Your third clue question. If you leave food in the oven for way too long, it might be described as being burnt to a blank. Crisp. Burnt to a crisp is correct. And what do you get by mixing water and flour? Starch. Starch. I'm looking for dough. Dough. So your four clues are dough. jar, monster, crisp, and dough. What would tie those four things together? The cookie monster. The cookie monster. I, I'll give you a cookie. Cookie is what we're looking for. Uh, cookie jar, cookie monster, cookie crisp, and cookie dough. You get the bonus point. You got two for you. Let's go over to the scoreboard here. We have Micha with one and one and Sabina with two. So we have, oh, we're not tallying up your points here. Let's see. There we go. We have a very close game and we're going to move over to Katya. Are you ready? Thumbs up. Always good for Let's an audience. It. Podcast, is it? <laughs> Are you ready? Silence. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, forgot to wear a well. All right, your first question. What colors make up the Canadian flag? Uh, red and white. Red and white is correct. What is Sunmade famous for selling? Sunmade, never heard of them. So I will guess um, uh, like sun dried tomatoes. Sun dried tomatoes. Very close. You're on the right track. It is raisins. They're famous raisins. If you don't honor a bet, you blank on it. You blank on the bet. Oof. Uh, you. I'm not usually good at English. Uh, <laughs> um, I know, drop. I know. The, it's Welch. You Welch on the bed. No, is, is English anybody's first language? Is it? No. <laughs> no. Oscar. Uh, kind of. So, and, and uh, not only are you sitting in the hot seat, but you're doing a trivia show in a secondary language. So here we go. The your fourth clue. Which song about a drink was written by Neil Diamond and was a hit for the band UB40? <laughs> Sabina knows it. <laughs> uh, lemonade? I don't know. Lemonade. It is red, red, red wine. Red, <laughs> red, red wine. Uh, so your clues are, what ties these four things together? Red, white, raisins, Welch, and red, red wine. Um, we got wine, Welch's, raisins, and red and white. I will guess that 
you can make a cake out of all of them. I don't know what a wine cake would be like, but sounds like something well, you could all eat of those, for a long day. <laughs> all those are either types of or made from grapes. You have red and white uh, grapes, okay. raisins come from grapes, red, red wine uh, from grapes as well. But not too bad. You walked away with a point. We're still, it's still anybody's game. And that means we're going to Oscar. He set the order. He gets the last questions. Are you ready, Oscar? I'm ready. The two Let's largest go. crocodilian species are crocodiles and what? Alligators, correct? Alligators. Which substance is commonly referred to as black gold? Uh, not sure. Oh, you got to think America. It's oil. Oil. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Oil's like black gold. And what color is the thumb of a person who is excellent at gardening? Green. Green thumb is correct. And popular topping on a plate of nachos are salsa, cheese, sour cream, jalapenos, and a dollop of which green mush? Guacamole. Guacamole is correct. Three out of four. So what ties together alligator, oil, green, and guacamole? Ah, uh, they're all green, but the color <laughs> green, green is not too big the answer. The green is... Uh, Can we like support each other? Like whisper the <laughs> Oh yeah, well, there's no rules on this show. I, did I tell you that? <laughs> there, no, there I mean, no you do whatever you want. <laughs> as long as you're having fun, that's all I care about. <laughs> is it is it a competition or or do you guys want it to be a collaborative thing? Like we're doing it <laughs> Give a hint, if you know. Depends how bad you feel for Oscar. I, I'll go for it right now. I think it, it's the it's the that thing you make the guacamole out of <laughs> avocados avocado is correct let's go over to that scoreboard we have... that related, related to alligators though there's a <laughs> well there's an alligator uh avocado it's a type of avocado called an alligator avocado you can wow. get avocado oil they're green and they make guacamole but it's still a very close game only only three points separate first and fourth and now we're going to the final question. I got 15 questions in this round. This is where I've, I asked my guests to bring in buzzers. And if we'd like to try each buzzer, let's try Sabina's buzzer. So Sabina has a shake. Oscar, do you have a... No. He's got the DJ horn. Meet ya. He's got a... I don't know if I made enough noise. All right, you got like a drum sound. And Katia, <laughs> all right, she's got the director's uh, board. Yeah, so, and it reads. Eat dirt. I think <laughs> Katia's coming back. <laughs> so here we go. In this round, I have 15 questions. These aren't uh, extremely difficult, um, but they are challenging. But time is going to be what's important here. If you know the answer, you're going to buzz in. The first mm. person to buzz in, you get to answer it. I'll lock everybody out. If you're correct, you'll get a bonus point. If you're wrong, you will lose a point. So you got to be fast and accurate. So you can get negative points in this round. And yeah. after, after we do the first one, it should be okay. I mean, you'll, after we do the first one, you'll see how it really works out. So you'll see how we'll see the level of competition with everybody. <laughs> All right. The first question. What is the most populous city in Canada with French as the official language? Sabina. Yeah. <laughs> do I, do I yes, speak? Uh, Sabina, go ahead. Can I, can I give the answer? Or yes. Like, yeah, yeah, yes. <laughs> I think it's Quebec. Quebec. Incorrect. Damn! <laughs> Isn't that a state or the city? It's a city. It's a city. Did you want to buzz in, Micha? You did. You, you buzzed in, but late. 
I think because of a delay. <laughs> sure. Is it Ontario? Ontario incorrect. <laughs> oh. Damn. Any other guesses? I only can name four Canadian cities, and I'm a lot closer than you, so you're going all right already. <laughs> can I buzz in again? You can buzz in as many times, but Micha just buzzed in again. Go ahead. Toronto. Toronto incorrect. <laughs> French speaking. Oh, Sabina. God damn. Is, is it Vancouver? It is not Vancouver. <laughs> I just guess all the Canadians, you know. Okay, we're, we're spiraling in. There we go. It's actually a badge of honor to finish negative on the show. People love it. All right. <laughs> I'll give you three seconds. Two. Ooh. Oh, wait. Is it Montreal? Montreal is correct. Wow. Katia with the point. Let's go to that scoreboard because we've had some changes here. We had Mitya lost two points, Adia picks up one, and Sabina <laughs> lost two points. So, so now, now you see after the first question how it's played. Uh, <laughs> and Oscar comfortably in the lead. Yeah. Like, yeah, I'm not gonna... <laughs> He's like, I'm going to ride this one out. <laughs> if this is how it's going to go, I'm not going to buzz in. All right, here we go. In what country was bodybuilding American actor, the governor, Arnold Schwarzenegger, born? I buzzed first. <laughs> I saw Sabina shaking, but I didn't hear it. You got to shake louder. Sabina. <laughs> it's Austria. Austria is correct. Nice. We know the origins of European uh, yeah. gone American stars. Thank you very much. <laughs> All right, that'll cut your negative in half. <laughs> Thank you. All right, your third question. What percentage is one person in a group of 25 people? Sabina. It's 4%. 4% is correct. You're back to zero. Woo! <laughs> Ooh, math skills. All right. IT lady. Here we go. Another one. <laughs> How many chambers is the human heart divided into? I think <laughs> Kat Katya. Katya. It's, it's four. Two atriums and two ventriculums. All right. Two, a point for you. Pharmacy. All right. Here we go. How many strings does a violin have? <laughs> oh, I heard, I heard DJ horn. <laughs> I'll go for... Four? Okay, Micha answered before me. Yeah. <laughs> I think I feel Micha's on a very bad delay. Yeah. Uh, Oscar did buzz in before you, <laughs> but I don't know. I'm just gonna throw the question out, <laughs> unless you want to. Unless let, somebody says you buzz in first. <laughs> no, let him go. Let him go. Because like, if, it, if it's correct, give them both points. If it's incorrect, let them burn. Both. <laughs> <laughs> they both said four. I'll go on Sabina's advice, and Oscar and Mitya both get a point. You've cut your <laughs> deficit in half, Mitya. Our next question. Here's comes some more math skills. Get ready with your math skills. What is the square root of 36? Sabina. It's four. Four. <laughs> incorrect. <laughs> I You fell for my trick. <laughs> I think Mitya buzzed in. I believe so. Did you tap? No, that was me. Uh, oh, yeah. Six. <laughs> Did you... Uh, <laughs> Yeah. Did you no. both answer six? No. I, right, I, I did. did. All right, Katya, Katya gets a point, and I think Mitya has also said six. I'm going to give him the delay uh, benefit. Yeah. A benefit of the delay. That's, that's right. Here we go. Let's, let's go to the score because I'm already. I can, I can maybe you. in the chat, maybe if I can just. Oh, I owe Oscar a point. Oh, uh, oh my math teachers are now quaking. <laughs> Oh wait, uh, we got. Oh, we're positive now. And oh no, 
That's three. And then you're negative one again, Sabina. Yes. <laughs> All right, here when we I'm go. Having fun. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see. Uh, doo -doo -doo. One. Dun -dun. All right, here we go. Our next question. So sometimes on the show, I'll run so a I'll bunch of answers. You got my buzzer, if that's okay. You're going to buzz in by typing? Yeah, that's yeah. what I said. Okay. Uh, sometimes yeah, on the show, in the chat, I'll, I'll, if I type I'll, one, I'll, maybe you get that time. <laughs> Sometimes on the show, I'll run a bunch of answers with this or a bunch of questions with the same answer, uh, and then I'll just stop it. And that's what happened on this. I did four, 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 six. So here mm. we go. Sneaky. Damn. Okay. Oh. Okay. All okay. Right. Yeah. Wow. All right. What country is sports apparel and accessories company Adidas from? Sabina. I think it's Germany. Germany is correct. Back to zero again. <laughs> Can I tell a fun story at this point? Yeah. <laughs> Apparently the Adidas, like the two stripes logo or however you call this visual image, was actually um, originated from some Finnish company uh, who was then so broke that Adidas bought them out for two bottles of vodka. Wow. <laughs> Invented in Lithuania. <laughs> All right, here we go. What country is famous for chocolate, banks, and water? I think I heard oh. DJ Horn. Switzerland. Switzerland. It's correct. So can we buzz even before you're done telling the question? Yeah, you can buzz in. Oh, Whoever sure. buzzes in locks everybody out. <laughs> but but yeah, Sorry, it was before Oscar. <laughs> I got this. Go ahead. Go ahead, Sabina. Uh, it, I, I was just trying to say that it wouldn't be shameful for Oscar if he didn't get this question. So. <laughs> I also, if you do buzz in before I finish reading the question, I stop reading the question. I don't complete the question. So mm -hmm. I'll let you hang and then out the dry. <laughs> good. All right, here we go. Like this, this will be a good one to not to buzz in early for. On a roulette wheel, what color is the number zero? <laughs> Sabina. I think it's green. Green is correct. Back to the positive side. Do you have a secret gambling problem, Sabina? That we don't know <laughs> not, it's, it's honestly not that secret. <laughs> oh. <laughs> okay, you're, we have six questions remaining. And let's go to that scoreboard real quick. Let's see. Yeah. I owe, let's see, Sabina has gone positive, two in a row. And I got three, the one, and I owe Oscar a point. So there's still six questions remaining. There's only four points between last and first, so it's anybody's game still. It's time to get aggressive. <laughs> <laughs> Eat dirt. Yep. <laughs> What Italian city is Romeo and Juliet set in? Verona. <laughs> with authority. She doesn't even wait. It is correct. Katia with a point. Oh, I know my hopeless romantics. <laughs> yeah. All right, here we go. This one's a 50-50 chance here. What body part, and I'm looking specific, <laughs> what body part does Luke Skywalker lose in his fight with Darth Vader? <laughs> Sabina. Oh, wait. wait, hold on. 846. Uh, meet you typed in a one first. Okay. He out typed you. <laughs> I think it was an arm, like a hand. A I need it's, it's a 50 50 chance. So, which is it this or that? <laughs> right left. or left? I think it's the left one. Left I think it's the left one. Incorrect. Oh, oh God, you have to pull in. <laughs> right hand. It is the right <laughs> hand. Look at this. Points are swinging. God, you up Kevin to five points. He's one point away from tying the game. <laughs> Here we go. Four questions remaining. One point between first and second. 
which planet in our solar system is closest to the sun at Sabita? It's Mercury. Mercury is correct. <laughs> Good one. I, I would call it my favorite on the timing of my one and her snap, but, but it's okay. <laughs> oh, yeah, I'm trying to watch everything. I'm sorry. <laughs> All right, here we go. I'm, I'll watch. I'm trying to it's watch. Okay, I'm, I'm kidding. It's fine. <laughs> All right. One of my favorite questions are uh, questions about the movie Back to the Future. In, <laughs> in the movie Back to the Future, what speed must a DeLorean reach in order to achieve time travel? Like, are you looking for a specific oh. number? God, yeah, did click. I, it's a wild guess because that's the only speed I know. Warp speed? Warp speed, incorrect. Oh, well. Good guess. That's Star Trek, right? And Media buzzed in second. I would, if it was the real world, I would say a fraction of the light speed, but probably because it's a movie, it was light speed. You're overthinking this. This is an American movie about a, a DeLorean time traveling. It, it's going to be a mile per hour. <laughs> that, that is incorrect. Even miles per okay. hour for us is like, is that 1.8 times how many? <laughs> Any other guesses? Yeah, I'll try. All right, Oscar. 356 <laughs> miles. <laughs> it's really each either. <laughs> Incorrect. I appreciate the guess. Uh, Let's burn it all. Let's burn it to negative. Oscar, fuck it. Fame is not worth it. Throw it away. Throw it away. Uh, Sabina, did you, are you going to take a guess? No. All right. It is. It's only 88 miles per hour. Oh. You're at the speed of light. <laughs> It's like uh, like highway miles, you know, a little faster wow. than the highway. So it's for us. It's more like a hundred and twenty. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Metric system. Yay! Right. Oscar loses a point, <laughs> and Mitya is back to zero, and Kadia goes to four. No. <laughs> Still a one point game, and oh, I did owe Sabina a point from before. She had two positive. So we're we're very close with two questions remaining. Oh damn! Are you ready? Yes. What is the largest island in the Mediterranean? Which one is it? I heard. I heard DJ. What? What is, is it? Malta. Malta. Incorrect. Kadia. Is it Cyprus? Cyprus. Incorrect. Oh. oh. Can I have to wait, meet, just reach into the bus. Hold on. Can you repeat the question? <laughs> <laughs> he buzzed in to get the question repeated. What is the largest island in the Mediterranean? Sicily. Sicily, Sicily is correct. It was Media's question. He did buzz in. Uh, Kadia, he's buzzed in on the side here. I know. I want to cheat. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So you're back to positive. Uh, do you, I, you lost one more, Kadia. And oh, then. I'm going in the wrong direction. <laughs> yes, yeah, so we are. Actually, Oscar has gained two and lost two. So we have six to five. Yeah, both Oscar, yeah. Both Oscar and Mia. I've gained two and lost two. Uh, Kadia has gained five and lost two. So she's a three. That's correct. And Sabina was all over the place. Had some, <laughs> lost some, and then came back with two more. And well, I'm, this here's how I keep score officially. So if you just say, <laughs> you're like, what is that? You wonder why I get confused. Words, so usually. All right. Our last question tonight, this morning, this afternoon, <laughs> uh, and it's Literally, Oscar can steal it, but if if Kadia or Sabina get the question right, they will tie, and we'll have to go to a tiebreaker question, which I have not prepared for. <laughs> All right, Let's and go, girl. Media can play the spoiler. 
All right, here we go. We're looking for a capital city. How well do you know your capital cities? Oh, yeah. What is the capital of Australia? I caught you. It's uh, Canberra. Canberra is correct. We have a tie. <laughs> she has tied it up. Six to six with Oscar, who came into the final round with six points. He's... <laughs> He it's thought he could cruise through to the end. Let's find a fun uh, tiebreaker question. Give me a second here. I think it has I have a document called tiebreakers. <laughs> I, I feel like it's my duty because I helped Oscar with the avocado and also because of our sisterhood to support you in this. <laughs> so, Katya, you have my Whole support. Thank and you. My, and my I feel very empowered. Me to help me. <laughs> dun, dun, dun. Let's think of topics. Oscar sucks. All right, do you, we sure. can do two ways. We can do a list where you have to name things on a list, or uh, we can do a number and you have to, whoever's closest to the number. Hmm. <laughs> hmm. <laughs> Do the list thingy. All right. Yeah, let's I do agree that. with the list thingy. All right. Let's see. Let me find. I need to find a global international list here. <laughs> <laughs> Still searching. There's a lot of lists I have are like American movies, and that won't help. <laughs> yeah. <it's just laughs> Prolonging the show for an hour. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, <laughs> good luck. It's not, uh, thankfully, it's not Swiss movies because how many have you made, Oscar? <laughs> Ever. <laughs> Two. Oh, yeah. The sound of music, isn't it? I think so. <laughs> you know, I'm not even 100% Swiss, so it's all confusing to me anyway. <laughs> nope. Let's see. Yeah. These I, are very, uh, the very American centric tiebreaker questions. <laughs> What's the like? I have the top retail stores by volume, uh, <laughs> uh, the top movies by gross. Let's see. Hmm. That could good. that could be yeah. Let's see. That's top grossing movies of the eighties. Oh, like one thing that I. When I when it comes to these kind of lists, one thing I always think of is that uh, meme with Wikipedia. So this is our list of serial killers. It's incomplete. You can help by expanding it. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's see. <laughs> I think I have a list there. Let's see. Let's see it. Hold on, hold on. <laughs> Oh, well, this is by... Nope, sorry. You th you'd think I'd be prepared by now. <laughs> I'm just trying to find a... Let's see. While everybody's waiting, go check out the learning experience. Yeah, go, uh, yeah go, go ahead. Uh, go like <laughs> Trainers Forum page and check out everything. <laughs> Let's see, 10. Getting closer. I got an idea. Ooh. And as, as one plug, as I know, um, for for the podcast, if you feel like you have any any cool topic to share or or you'd like to just come kick the, the can around and, uh, yeah, just learn in real time with other people, then um, yeah, reach out either to, to, to Oscar uh, the hello email, whatever. We're always looking for new people bringing in their pieces of the puzzle. All right, you can hear the printer running. Oh, all right. So, of course, an American tiebreaker question. I would pick automobiles, but what are the 10 best-selling European cars uh, in Europe? So this is make and model. And I have a list of 10 from 2018. 
And Oscar, you got to pick the order. You want to keep the order the same, or do you want to go second? And the, oh, I'm sorry. And let me tell you the rules. <laughs> yeah. So what we're gonna do? I have a list of the top ten best-selling European cars, and so none of these are American. Oh, there's one American model. I'll give you that. Um, that's it. All the rest are, you wow. know, the brands that you guys have over there. I'll say that. I won't give. I don't want to give away too much. Um. So what'll happen? I have the list of ten. You'll each take a turn guessing, mm -hmm. and you'll go until you have three incorrect answers. So you can miss three times. Whoever misses third is out. So, Oscar, do you want to keep the order the same or go second? I prefer to go second. All right. <laughs> Kadia. <laughs> yeah, I would just like to give a small introduction that my extent of knowledge on cars is that it's a thing that's on four wheels and takes you from place A to B. <laughs> and that's oh, is, this, is this not a fair question? Is this <laughs> Not a fair tiebreaker. But she has Sabina. Life. That's life. Oh, is Sabina going to help her? Yeah, she has Sabina. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I think. <laughs> Let's think hear. You want to go to Sabina? <laughs> do, 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 you want, do you want me to like. I think. So let's see. Right now, I, I'm supposed to answer the top sold brand yeah. of cars in Europe that's Europe made. Yeah. Yeah. So the your, the top ten cars as listed by Global Fleet, the executive network. Go yeah. Okay. Um, <laughs> is the first Renault? So I there are there is one Renault, but I need the model. Oh, like that. Oh, then what? <laughs> Uh, is it a Clio? The Clio? Yeah. That is, is that the number Renault? two best selling at 366,000. Girl! You get, wow. There you go. So that's how it, that's how you play it. Over to Oscar. Okay. Oh, so you don't have to like guess the order. No, you don't need the order. Just ah, okay. make and model. Awesome. If it's on the list, you stay alive. If it's off the list, you get one strike. All right. If you run the list, I'm in trouble. We have to to uh, we have to come up with another one of these. <laughs> okay, so I can I say the one that Miss Chan just put in the chat? Volkswagen Golf. Oh, <laughs> I did see that it's is the number one selling at five hundred three thousand. Yeah. All right, so this is turning into boys versus girls very quickly here. Yeah. And we're losing because it's not our topic. This I mean, it's an, Sabina, we are living in an egalitarian world. There's nothing stopping me from learning about cars um, more than boys would. I just don't want to. Good. Okay. Let's 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 think. Okay. So my turn now, right? Yes. I will just go with what i know <laughs> this is the, the car that my, my 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 family always buys and it's a uh, opel astra it is not on the list oh well then i guess at least we buy like yeah, a yeah, mom, pristine yeah. model <laughs> that not every grandma has <laughs> oh, back to oscar I'm gonna say, I, I have no idea either, so I'm just gonna use what Sabina said in the chat. No! <laughs> okay, fine, I won't use it. Uh, is How do you make sure you're checking the chat? Is Volvo on the list somewhere? What is it? Volvo something? I don't know what. What's that thing? You said Volvo something? Is that... <laughs> A model something <laughs> in the car factory. Oh, we ran out of names. Let's just call it Volvo something. <laughs> All right, that's going to be your first strike. Back yeah. to Claudia. Yeah. So I will. I also had the idea of what Sabina wrote in the chat. So is it uh, sh how, how do you say Skoda or Skoda? We say in Slovenia uh, Skoda Octavia. That is number seven at two hundred and forty-one thousand units. <laughs> whoop whoop! Get it? Get it? 
And we yeah. also have to make noises. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> On audio <laughs> podcast, it's hard to tell dancing. Dancing in the screen. <laughs> Back to Oscar. Wow. Um, I imagine there are more French cars in the <laughs> on the place. What did you put? <laughs> Peugeot 208. That is number eight at 2035 or 235,000 units. We just it, it, the, the 307 needs to be there as well, or the 308. Like Peugeot, I, I don't think it's only one on the list. So, hidden my guess cars. then is did you say 307, Sabina? Yeah, the 307. Okay, so is it Peugeot 307? That also in is the list. not on the list. No more, no more, no more, no more Skodas. Uh, no more, they say Renault or Ren Renault. Renault. <laughs> Renault. 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 Uh, and. Ooh, uh, <laughs> some of the others repeat. Back to okay. Oscar. C I imagine there's a Citroën somewhere. Citroën C. Two, I think, is one. Incorrect. <laughs> no, 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 citrions or whatever they. <laughs> not on the list. Okay, Sabina, what's the 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 the, co the I think it's also Renault. You know the big like the big cars that go around, like the vans that everyone has, like Ooh. to smuggle everything. <laughs> Usually white. What are those? Due to legal reasons, I yeah. can't answer this question. Now let me uh, let me set the pace here. It's two strikes to two strikes. So this is sudden death. Oh Jesus! I think all of us exhausted all the models of cars that we collectively know. There's but, still um... six more. He got four of them. <laughs> Me, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. From the chat, Ford Fiesta. Ford Fiesta. <laughs> I don't even know who's helping who anymore. That is correct. <laughs> That's Thanks, the number four. Media. That's the only American. Sorry for all helping. Sabina, now we all have to help Oscar. <laughs> <laughs> but that's a Japanese car, Mita. Yeah. yeah. I do only see I do see one I, Japanese I have... car on the list, and it's not Toyota. I'll tell you that. There's a Japanese car on the list. There's a lot of people who. This is not Toyota. Uh, is it Nissan something? <laughs> Somebody's telling us to try Tatia. Yes, that's oh. right. <laughs> so that's what's the best-selling Tatia? But which, I think that's it's, how you said oh, it's it. It's definitely the best selling Dacia, it's definitely Logan. But or Sandero, would, or Sandero, I don't know. Oh. I'm going to go with Mitya's suggestion, the Opel Corsa. Is that the one? It is the 10th place on the <laughs> list. 223,000 <laughs> units. Wow. Back. Right. To the, uh, back to everybody. Like Russian Let's, roulette, you know. Let's see if you, if you can run the list. It's just a wash, and everybody wins. How about everybody work together? We got five yeah. left. Okay, so and, which? And you Dacia? already know. You already know one of them is going to be that model, the Dacia. Which oh, one did you say, Sabina? It's either Logan or Sandero, but I'm not sure. I wouldn't say Logan. So it's the Sandero. <laughs> Number nine, how did you figure it out? The oh. Dacia Sendero at 225,000. It's a Romanian make, so you still have three, five, and six. So, Mitya proposed in the chat, uh, the so the Japanese one, the Nissan Qashqai. But that's super expensive. Guess what? Europeans love it. It's number six, really. Oh. You got two left, and the, it's the same make as the number one answer was. Well, it was the Volkswagen, right? So you got to think back. I think it's Bora. Could it be Bora? Mitya says Volkswagen Polo. 
Is yeah, the polo definitely. Polo is number three. You got one more, and you've run the board. And the and the wow. trainer's form is the winner tonight. Everybody wins. <laughs> Can we get the last one? Is it another Volkswagen? It is another Volkswagen. I would say so. Do you say it's Tigman? Do you? What's what I agree? This is for sudden death. If this is wrong, trainers for him is finished. <laughs> this is finished. <laughs> Let's go for it, Volkswagen T1. That's the one yeah. that my parents have. Jet, 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 jet. And you are correct. Everybody Yay! wins the night. <laughs> it's unanimous. Oh, my God. We got the best of real life. Yes, what the fuck? Not... Media has, like, some secret uh, knowledge, uh, treasure of knowledge about cars. Did you want to be a car mechanic when you were young? Or, or you, when you were young? No, it just sticks in your mind when people are mentioning and when you're driving around. We see oh, the, the value of being attentive. Yay! Life. Awesome. I want to thank my guests today. We had so much fun. Uh, colors about a five-hour time difference. <laughs> and about a five minute delay for uh me <laughs> like connection i do apologize sometimes the delay can can determine the outcome of the game and it played a factor today for sure i want to thank the trainers for him and this is the part of the show where i don't censor i don't take anything out i turn it completely over to you anything you want to talk about plug promote it's all yours and go ahead we actually have a name in Trainers Forum for a conversation like that. It's called Jungle Mode. So when the official talk in the in the in the meeting ends, then we enter Jungle Mode. So oh. it sounds like we're in the jungle. You mode. have now entered. It feels very homely. <laughs> One thing I would like to share is just um, first of all my appreciation for everyone in the learning profession, like teachers and people right now. And the whole educational system, I would just share my humble kind of view for anyone out there if they're listening. I hope the future of education holds a distributed learning network. So not centralized kind of places of learning where only young people attend. And once you're out of school, you're basically not in touch with the cutting edge of, of knowledge anymore, which is very sad and foolish. <laughs> And I hope the future of education will have decentralized learning hubs where people can, can be co-learners, peer learning, so that we don't have to sacrifice the people who are best in something, you know, because usually they get taken away from high profile jobs, high paying stuff and whatever. And for the teaching profession in the high schools and the primary schools, you're usually left with people who aren't at the top of their game, let's say. So I hope the future of learning is a distributed learning system and hopefully Trainers Forum can add a piece do that and if you feel like doing that as well and helping with that um reach out somehow we'll figure out what to do later absolutely i couldn't agree more i would love to see it decentralized and and continue throughout life a lot of times here in the states especially go to school get a job once you get a job stop going to school like it just stops but it and it rarely continues outside of you know seeking it on your own or, or trying to better yourself but the have places to collaborate and bounce ideas off of would be phenomenal. Yeah. Thank we you so much for having yeah. us. I would add on that what Mitya was saying that, so one, one thing in trainers form that we also do is look out for uh, 21st century skills. And again, to everyone listening and from all of us uh, in the community of educators and no matter what you practice in life, do remember the skill of, um, critical thinking when it comes to assessment of uh, information that you're given. If you don't understand where your information is coming from or you cannot justify it, then I, if I were you, I wouldn't stand behind it. So that's like a nice skill for the modern era with all of the conflicting information about the situations that are currently taking place in the world. Just make sure that you go to a reliable source. So I should understand where it comes from. I shouldn't just read the headlines on Facebook. I should, you know. Yeah. <laughs> Would not advise. I would add just one more public service announcement, which is um, 
One more skill for the 21st century I would add is psychological sovereignty. And that might be a big word, but basically what it means is that you are in charge of your own kind of developmental process. Because there are people all around praying for your wallet, for your attention, for your opinions. And if you're not in touch with what's important to you as you're changing, as you're growing, you know, because what's important to you now isn't what's going to be important for you in, in five years, right? And to keep that touch with what's important to you and also to be aware of everything else around you, the opportunities and the threats for moving closer to what's, what's important. I think that's a super, super important skill. And, and one piece of that usually is uh, coming to befriend your own inner, let's say, um, shit. Because I use that word deliberately because shit can turn into fertilizer if you know where to put it. So I would just mention, you know, Google psychological flexibility, uh, psychological sovereignty, stuff like that. And yeah, just really take take kind of, you know, control of your life and what's important to you and, and how you want to live. Because if most of us do that, you know, you come to a common baseline of what's important to people, compassion and stuff like that and justice. And, you know, there, there's very, very little friction and conflict on, on the level of needs and values, just on the kind of strategies, how you want to go about and do them and what order you do them in. But, you know, that's fun. That's like a Sudoku puzzle. I, I agree. I, I think people are inherently good. They want to love their neighbor and, you know, take bread over and talk and have wine and just relax and, you know, be mm -hmm. together. But then you have all these outside forces saying, well, maybe you shouldn't like your neighbor so much. And, you know, I would love to just see people coming together and collaborating is like my number one thing. It's one of the reasons why I do this show is just fun. We're hanging out. Um, I'm meeting people from all over the world and we're just having a good time. And so it's the trainersforum.org on Facebook, on on the podcast apps at as the learning experience. Anything else we want to talk about tonight? This morning? I'm I'm off. <laughs> I'm still waking up. We are excited to be here. Thank you for having us. Awesome. Thank you for joining me. And until next week, I I don't really have a sign off. I usually let the, the guests sign off. <laughs> Thank you so much, Jeff. There's so much stuff I never knew that I know now. I'm always learning. I never knew I didn't know. <laughs>